and three, two, one. Welcome to The Peaceful Truth, the podcast where we talk about everything from women empowerment, feminism, and everything in between. You are joined by your host, Kenzie Meekbeck. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for another week. Um, with these solo episodes, I like to dive right into it. But as a teaser, I have a lot of fun interviews that I'm brainstorming and working on scheduling guests for that I think will be really exciting and that are coming up. And I can't wait for you to tune in. If you didn't tune in to last week's episode, Katie Blackwell was on and she's a super inspiring blogger. So you should check her out. Um, it was really cool just also to get a motivation for side hustle and re spark that motivation of keeping motivated and keeping on your side hustle. Um, So though I'll get right into it today, I got this idea to discuss today's episode content from my friend Rob, who also hosted a podcast with my brother-in-law. It's called Still Got Nothing. Um, I think they did this episode or something very similar on it. Um, So if you want even more information and more um, opinions and insight, you can go over to their podcast. Um, But my guess is they have a very similar opinion. But anyway, we're going to be talking about video games. That is what our philosophical discussion was about. Valve is the gaming company that we're going to be referring to today. They're based in Bellevue, Washington, which is right across from Seattle. across the water from Lake Washington. So they can literally, you can see the neighboring cities. So very close by to here, hits home. Um, And according to Wikipedia, it was founded by two Microsoft employees in the mid nineties. And Microsoft is also right around the corner in Redmond, which is next to pretty much Bellevue. Um, This company has made games like Half-Life, Counter-Strike and Left 4 Dead. Counter-Strike is something I've heard of. The other two I haven't. Um, I feel like I'm getting old. This whole gaming, um, the recent increase in gaming online and streaming gaming, I think is so cool and a concept that could really bring friends together from around the world. But I never kind of continue to get into video games as an adult. I liked them on the old consoles as a kid, but as I grew up, um, I didn't kind of stay interested in it. But I think all of this is super interesting. This company, Valve, made Steam in 2003. Now this is a platform that's like an app center. So an app center on your phone, obviously, can bring in developers and developers can upload different app ideas and it can be put on the platform and they can make money from it. Similarly, Steam is a platform where game developers can publish their own games. Um, Obviously, that's a beautiful concept and could create endless possibilities, but it can also, as you can imagine, even create controversial content, which is what we're going to be talking about today. For example, they recently, or they once pulled a game, I don't know if it was recent, called Active Shooter from Steam. And this was a school shooting simulator. And this is all according to a Variety article by Stephanie Fogel. So yes, that I think is the right call. Um, there is uh, a very much an issue with mass shootings in the US and I think it's a very good call to take something like that off their private website. Again, this is a private platform, not a public one, not a government-based one. Um, so the company claims it has a laissez-faire attitude for what it publishes, according to this Variety article again, but as long as the games are not illegal or straight up trolling is what the article says that they say their laissez-faire uh, attitude is like. But Valve recently decided to remove a controversial game, um, unreleased game called Rape Day. So they decided to remove it and not release it ever. Um, But the game, I guess, from what I hear, was based in a zombie apocalypse type world and it was a visual novel that enabled the player to verbally harass, kill, and rape women as they choose to progress through the story. It included violence, sexual assault, non-consensual sex, obscene language, necrophilia, and incest. Um, So that game was never released, but it was developed and attempted to put on Steam. So much of uh, this is what Steam went on to say as a release statement of why they decided not to release it. 
Much of our policy around what we distribute is and must be reactionary. We simply have to wait to see what comes to us via STEAM Direct. Um, we then have to make a judgment call about any risk it puts to Valve, our developer partners, or customers. After significant fact-finding and discussion, we think Rape Day poses unknown costs and risks, and therefore it won't be on Steam. Keep in mind the costs and risks thing. Um, I'm going to touch back on that. Um, we respect developers' desire to express themselves, and per the purpose of Steam is to help developers find an audience. Again, a beautiful concept, but again, it opens uh, a door where it's endless possibilities, good and bad, like we've just seen. But this developer has chosen content matter and a way of representing it makes it very difficult to help them do that. Anyway, according to several Reddit feeds, gamers allegedly feel targeted. They say, but you can kill people in games, so this is like a nothing different argument. Um, I think it brings, that quote brings up an interesting point. But overall, and I'm gonna come back to this a few times, this is a private company. It's not public, it's not the government, so they have the right to represent themselves and express themselves in the way that they want to. So at any time, whether they claim they have a laissez-faire attitude or not, they can take things down from their website. They have the right to take things down from their website. It's not limiting your freedom of speech publicly or through the government. Um, it's their decision because it's who they are. Um, anyway, it does, that quote though about killing people, what makes it any different, um, I understand that argument and I actually don't know where the line should be drawn in like freedom of speech and where the line of inciting violence goes, um, which is where freedom of speech is limited. Um, but yeah, I think I don't agree with any games that m make f something fun or normalize something that's illegal and wrong and terrible. Um, but do I believe that Anything controversial should be limited by the government to be able to talk about? No. Um, so it, it's a fine line, and I understand that argument, but I do feel like personally, games about killing, games about rape, to this extreme and openly normalizing it is, in my opinion, a form of inciting violence. Um, and I think it's wrong, and I think the company did the right thing. So I, f I feel like it is inciting actions of harm. Um, I understand that it's not a real person and it might not cause everyone to go run out there and commit rape or murder, but I do feel like things like this normalize it um, in society, which therefore makes it seem okay and a standard thing to do, especially to an impressional viewer um, who hasn't been very experienced in the world and in culture. Um, but where is the line in all of this? Killing is normalized as well. Does this create more violence as well? These killing type games, does, would this create more occurrences of rape? And how far do we limit that freedom of speech? And I do think it's a slippery slope into limitations. Um, but again, going back to um, the costs and risks and possibly inciting something, I, I think that there is a danger that there could be a danger there by normalizing it culturally. Um, but overall, I think it's fine when a private company does limit freedom of speech. It wasn't a public government entity. Um, they have the right, again, to express what's on their platform. And in the end, this company made the right decision. It's out of the hands of young, impressionable gamer, gamers. And at least in this instance, and in this game, they, they saved people from normalizing rape. Um, and it should be kept out of young men's hands. Um, and yeah, so I think that the company did make a right call here. Um, but please let me know what you think. I think it's a very interesting debate, a very interesting concept. Um, on a lighter note, <laughs> what are you looking forward to this week? Um, I think it's always important to reflect every week and every day to think what you're either grateful for or what you're looking forward to. For, uh, to. This week, I guess, 
um, I'm grateful for and looking forward to spending time with my cat. I know that's silly, but it was his fourth birthday this past week. And this whole episode, he interrupted me and I had to redo it several times, but I'm grateful for him. He has been my right man, hand man for four years now. So consider what you're grateful for or what you're looking forward to this week. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, a lot of exciting interviews and content to continuing to come up and down the pipeline for the peaceful truth. Have a great week, guys.